Okay, guys. Well, I have a couple of interesting articles here that I wanted to bring to your attention. And they're in relation to a pretty interesting comet that is due to pass very close to us in November 2013, Comet Ison. Now, this is a pretty spectacular comet. It, it's going to outshine the moon. Which leads me to the question of why is nobody talking about this? Are we experiencing comet fatigue? Now, I began on YouTube last year, early last year, when Comet Elenin was all anybody was discussing. And I started looking into Leonid Elenin. And interestingly enough, there was very little information that could be found on this supposed amateur astronomer. In fact, when I did do research into Leonid Elenin, I found that he was not an amateur astronomer. In fact, he was very far from an amateur astronomer. But I wondered, after looking into this comet for most of the year, whether we were being led to think that this comet was going to be some huge event for a reason. And a few weeks before Comet Elenin actually went past the sun and it actually dove into the sun and destroyed itself, I realized that there was a push, there was an agenda to create this huge, sensationalized, event all around Comet Elenin and it was there for a reason and I think that this may have been because when Comet Ison started to become something that they would have to relay information about, we would all just think about Comet Elenin and then start believing that perhaps Comet Ison is going to be nothing more than a, another Comet Elenin that really amounted to nothing. Now, personally, I believe Comet Elenin was very integral to awakening a lot of people. A lot of people actually began seeking more information and asking more questions because of all of the hoo-ha basically surrounding this comet. So I do believe that it helped raise us consciously. Unfortunately when Comet Elenin didn't really amount to much, a lot of people did decide to go back to sleep because there is a difference to being awake and to being conscious and you know waking up is easy and it's easy to wake up and then go back to sleep. You can do that but once you become conscious you cannot become unconscious. So I do think that there were a lot of people that became conscious due to the information that they started seeking out because of all of this speculation about Comet Elenin. So it just makes me very curious why we are not seeing this type of speculation and this sensationalizing of this Comet Ison. And, you know, perhaps, as I said, there's a reason behind that, and that's because people just believe that this is going to be nothing very spectacular. There is nothing really special about this comet. It's just going to be another element. And my feelings are that it's far from the truth. My feelings are intuitively that Comet Ison is something very important, and this is why they're playing it down. And I think that we will see a few articles about Comet Ison at the beginning of the year and then they really won't talk about Comet Ison much at all. So, I wanted to bring these two articles to you. The first article was published on the 27th of December on Mail Online and it goes on to say that the comet that could outshine the moon in 2013, guy gazes anticipating objects so bright it could even be visible in daylight. So not only is this comet going to be brighter than the moon, we're going to be able to see this comet in daylight. So it goes on to say, astronomers around the world are tracking with eager anticipation the arrival of a comet next year, which could even outshine our moon in the night sky. 
Comet Ison is expected to draw millions into the dark to witness what is likely to be the most brilliant comet seen in many generations. It is visiting the inner solar system for what is thought to be the first time and is set to put on spectacular views for the northern hemisphere across November and December as it heads towards the sun. So it's even going to be one of the most brilliant comets seen in many generations, hundreds of years. It may prove to be brighter than any comet of the last century, visible even in daylight. And this may end up being its one and only trip to the solar system, as its trajectory may see it plunge into the sun in a fiery death. It is currently moving inwards from beyond Jupiter, and its approach, as it approaches the Earth, the dirty snowball, which is a load of crap, okay, they are not dirty snowballs, that is flat Earth science, and I would suggest that you look into the Electric Universe theory if you want the real factual information about what a comet is. So it's going on to say that it could produce a dazzling display burning brighter than the moon and potentially being visible in broad daylight. It goes on to say that the comet will be visible to the naked eye in the night sky by late November. Its tail could stretch like a searchlight into the sky above the horizon. Then it will swing rapidly around the sun, passing within 2 million miles of it, far closer than any planet ever does, to emerge visible in the evening sky heading northward towards the pole star. Now that's really interesting if you look at the Hopi prophecy in regards to the blue kachina and the red kachina and also what precedes the blue kachina and the red kachina because it mentions the pole. Somebody has also put forward a theory which I found quite interesting that perhaps these noctilucent clouds that we're seeing which are very shimmering and they refract the light very differently than a normal cloud, perhaps what we're seeing with that is what is the metals and material that was in Comet Elenin and once Comet Elenin hit the sun this was dispersed by the solar wind and is now sitting in our atmosphere. I just found that a really interesting uh, theory. So it goes on to say that it could be an unaided eye object for months. So we could actually see this comet for months and nobody's talking about it guys. I mean seriously, why? Why is nobody talking about this comet? Look at this comet's name even, I Son, I the Sun. I mean, somebody said uh, S-I-O-N going for the Xeon. I mean, I, look, I really don't like going down that path. Everything gets turned towards the Illuminati and conspiracy, and I'm not going there with this comet, seriously. I don't think that that is, you know, something that you can bring from that name Ison, but I'm, I suppose, you know, lots of people will speculate in that area. However, I'm rather seeing it for I and then Sun. And it goes on to say that it's a parabolic orbit, which means that it's only ever come into our solar system once. Well, they don't know that. Okay, they have no way of knowing that this may have been a comet that its cycle is 26,000 years. And there was nobody here to witness it the last time it came through. Because really, that's the only way they know if a comet has passed by before from ancient record keeping. Anyway, it goes on to say a little bit more, but I will let you have a look at that for yourself. I'll link that article underneath because I did want to show you this article as well. And this article is on New Scientist and it was published on the 24th of December. And I find it interesting that they're publishing these articles around the comet in, you know, Christmas time. You know, like, so around a time where there's already people looking at a lot of other things and everyone's attentions elsewhere. So it goes on to say, of course, it starts out with Doomsday is disappointed by 2012, non-apocalypse. Okay, it's really annoying when they start anything like that. And so it goes on to say pretty much the same thing. It's going to be the first trip to our inner solar system. It's going to be brighter than the moon. But what I find is interesting is the bit of information at the end of this article. And it goes on to say, the year will also herald celestial fireworks of a different flavour, thanks to a gas cloud. Now this is called the G2 cloud and I have done another 
video in relation to this. It's all about the galactic superwave and some of the information I found in regards to the galactic superwave and this G2 cloud that is currently moving towards our galactic core. So it goes on to say that thanks to a gas cloud with three times Earth's mass heading towards the usually placid supermassive black hole at the center of the galaxy. So that's our galactic core. So this G2 gas cloud is now heading towards our galactic core. And they go on to say that the collision won't be visible to the naked eye, but X-ray telescopes will pick up radiation from the shock waves created as the cloud slams into the halo of hot gas around the hole. As the black hole called Sagittarius A sits a mere 25,000 light years away on our cosmic doorstep, the crash should provide an unprecedented view of material plowing into a black hole. It could even yield important clues about what happened 300 years ago when the black hole was much brighter than now. So interestingly, we are going to experience a shock wave from this gas cloud moving into our galactic core. And this is something that they have never witnessed before. Yet, we don't see a lot of information being put forward about this. So anyway, I think that 2013 is the year that we are going to see a lot of very unusual events in our atmosphere. And I think that 2012 was basically our preparation year. So I hope you have prepared, guys, and I hope you're ready for what's to come. Anyway, as I said, I will post the articles underneath the video. And as always, peace out.